Okay. Um, here's a quick character introduction for a player that I made, a uh, Palladium Fantasy role-playing player I made for Gabriel. Uh, we're going to go by Lex, because, uh, you know, he's a pre-law student, so, not you know, funny, funny man. Uh, and we picked an Elf and Mind Mage. Attributes, for now, we'll go with color alignment unscrupulous all right uh attributes these are kind of your fundamental characteristics uh iq is 16 that's about 160 iq for us mortals so he gets a skill bonus mental endurance is how much stress you can handle and as you can see uh, forgive the head cold uh, my snotty godchildren loved me a whole lot over christmas break and so now now I can't breathe through my mouth. All right. Yeah. Mental endurance of 24 is kind of at the peak of, of what a mortal could have um, or getting very close there. So that's going to give him a plus 7 to save against psionics and a plus 11 to save against insanity. Just nothing rattles this guy. I rolled a low mental affinity. That's not unusual for elves and palladium. They're, they're tall and they're pretty, but they're not all that... Um, they're really not all that uh, um, well-liked. Uh, meant, uh, so physical strength, and this is after doing a lot of physical training, is 11, which is kind of the average human. So growing up, Lex was actually too weak to be a soldier or a warrior, which he really wanted to be. Um, but he's really worked out and really trained, and he's gone from being kind of a pathetic skinny wimp to being kind of an average build. And that's the result of intense training. I did really rock the physical prowess, which is very similar to like dexterity in Dungeons and Dragons. That's going to give him good combat bonuses of a uh, four to strike, parry, and dodge. Physical endurance, a little bit above average. Physical beauty is low. He's ugly for an elf and relatively attractive for a human being. And a speed of 17 is, you know, he's decently fast. He's not going to win any track records, but he can outrun most people, your average person. Now, here's the critical thing. He's got some really good attribute stats, but as a psychic character, he's only got 19 hit points and 20 STC. And as we've seen from the adventure so far, this means two really solid hits. It's all it's going to take to put this guy down. Uh, he's uh, he's incredibly powerful level and character if he's used right, but he's kind of a glass cannon. He can't take the hits. So we have other players who are tanks, and this is somebody who can kind of be in the middle rank where he doesn't really want to be in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but he's good enough, and he works really hard at being a good fighter, so he can hold his own alone, but he's not. he doesn't belong on the front lines. Inner strength points. This is what uh, fuels your psychic powers. And then I, just to keep track so you don't lose track of what your maximum is, that's quite a lot at 134. Um, the I have a whole different category written down here for spent. And because he is a mind mage character, he's going to recover two per hour and 12 every hour that he sleeps or meditates. That's a very, very fast rate. Uh, to do this, he used up a lot of his magic potential, so he's got basically none. A PPE of four. As an elf, he can see 60 feet in the dark. Uh, doesn't have any experience yet. Okay. 2240 to get to the next level is relatively high. Because, again, mind mages are probably the strongest level 1 characters. They don't have as much flexibility uh, going on as they level up. But as they're lower levels, they're, they're typically far more powerful for brief periods of time than other characters. Um, we'll get into this a little bit when we go into skills. These are his combat tables. Uh, he is skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat because he picked up he, martial arts. Uh, he's, he's a skilled wielder of a shield and a sword. And he's even better when he's fighting on horseback. Gets an additional plus one to parry and dodge. So, uh, attacks per melee. Uh, melee is 15 seconds, so he can get three decent attacks off every 15 seconds. Um, with At just level one, he's plus four to strike, six to parry, and six to dodge. That's with a d20, so that's 
very, very good for level 1. And of course, when he's wielding his sword, he's plus 5 to strike. And when he's using his shield, he's plus 7 to parry. So that's, those are very good stats. His defense, of course, if he ever finds a horse that he can stay on, his defense is going to be up to plus 8 with that shield when he's on horseback. And that'll be really good. Um, now he's uh a really dedicated he's really dedicated himself to his physical combat so he has a body flip throw attack uh 1d6 he had in an automatic ko or stun from his boxing training on a nat 18 uh nat 20 uh for 1d4 rounds so uh, if he seizes up, if he gets a, a perfect opportunity, he can put somebody down in one hit. This ability saved the entire party last night, last weekend. So, you know, don't knock it. Um, he's so good as a, as a tumbler that he can uh, basically grab somebody and do a flip and send them flying, doing 1d6 points damage, which is a, a decent attack. And he can leap five feet by five feet. <laughs> When he does on horseback, even though he's not very strong, he can use that leverage and get a bonus of damage. Runs around wearing studded leather armor, which is kind of standard. It's not bad. He's got a long sword, which is kind of your standard crusader sword. And as we've seen above, with a 5 to strike and a 6 to parry, even at level 1, he's very skilled with that sword relative to other low-level characters. Um, saving throws. And this is kind of scary. Uh, but he is save versus psionics. His target is 10. And then he's got a 7 of the roll, which means when he's got a save versus psy a psychic attack or something, um, unless there's no other bonus, he only has to roll a 4 or better to make his save. Or 3 or better. So if he rolls a 1 or a 2, he's going to fail. Everything else he's going to save. He's just that mentally tough. Uh, 3 against horror factor, 5 against possession, 6 against mind controlling drugs and potions, charms. Those are all on d20s. So he's very mentally resilient. Now, uh, psychic psychic characters don't have a lot of skills, and a lot of his skills went towards being a good enough fighter that if somebody gets to him, he doesn't just instantly die, because again, he's kind of frail. Uh, so he's got, uh, in combat terms, uh, martial arts and boxing and tumbling, which is kind of gymnastics without all the, all the poles and the vaults and stuff. So kind of think more like uh, breakdancing levels of, of gymnastics. Uh, and acrobatics. Um, so he can, uh, so he can do backflips, uh, boxing training. He invested a bunch of his skills to level up to martial arts. That's going to really pay off in a kind of a couple levels. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a decent writer. Not anything to write home about, but he's a skilled writer. He can speak Eastern and Elf, uh, Elfish slash Dragonese. Uh, he can speak fairy, and he can speak giant, and he can read elf and dragonese. So he's he's relatively educated, math basic. Uh, here's some more of his tumbling skills of pole vaulting and stilt walking. And for weapons proficiencies, he's skilled with shields and swords. He's also good at staying alive. He's got basic wilderness survival skills, and he can swim if he gets dumped in the lake. And that's a skill that you know nobody needs until they absolutely need it. Uh, so he isn't uh, an incredibly educated person, but he really has dedicated himself to plugging his weaknesses as a super vulnerable psychic character. And with his being so good at parrying and dodging, that he could probably stay, stay alive till his party can come help him. Gears, nothing super special. Uh, two sets of clothing, expensive cloak or cape, leather boots, belt, blanket, backpack, two sacks, six small sacks, water skin, food rations for three weeks, pocket mirror, tennis snuff, and a tinderbox. Heck, like he needs a tinderbox. Psychic powers, and you know, I can already hear those of you running over like magical characters looking at the number of psychic powers that my mages start off with at level one and going, hey, no fair. And yeah, this is kind of this is kind of where psychic characters are ridiculously overpowered is in the early levels my mages are just beasts uh, we will start going through them i built a hyperlink table so if you want to dig a little deeper you'll be able to, to bop right over to uh 
right over to wherever that uh, wherever that skill description already is. Bioregeneration, I'm going to go really quick here. Uh, he can sit down for about two minutes and meditate and heal himself for, uh, you know, healing touch. He can, again, it's a two-minute trance, but he can do that for other people. Psychic purification is cool. It's It gets rid of drugs and uh, poisons and toxins in the body. Uh, it doesn't work against magic. But um, you can even use this on people who are poisoned, and it doesn't erase the damage they've already taken, but it'll end the poison's effects on them. Uh, so those are his healing powers. He can alter his own aura, so he can hide his, hide or change his experience level. Um, he can uh, hide the fact that he has psychic powers. He can conceal... Um, his level of PPE, if he's got magic on him, he can hide that. He can hide sickness or injury, he, you know, make himself look uh, fresh and healthy. Float, you know, uh, when you've got 80 pounds of gear on, swimming's not all that fun. Uh, but for 8 ISP, he can uh, float about, an, uh, about a foot over the water, uh, any water. So drowning is not a huge problem as long as he can remain conscious. And um, he can actually use this float power, the ability to float, you know, about a foot over the over the over the ground or the water, to uh, break his fall if he gets thrown out of light, thrown off of cliffs, that kind of thing. <laughs> mind block prevents him, other psychics from reading his mind, although he honestly would have probably made his saves anyway. Night vision. Now, I don't know if he's already got decent night vision, but he can crank that up to ten times what an, an average elf can see. So um, instead of being able to see like eighteen meters, he can see two football fields in perfect clarity in the night. Uh, telekinesis. Um, he's got a couple versions of this. The low level one that's very more efficient. He can pick up things and, and manipulate them, turn things off, grab things from across the room, that kind of thing. But he can also use them to fight, you know, with three to strike and four to parry. Um, depending on the amount of uh, amount of juice he's got to burn, the ISP, it depends greatly on what, he, what size of thing he's picking up. His sensitive powers, he can commune with animals. If you use it right, that is a really useful power because, hey, you might not be able to track the bad guy because you don't have a lot of skills, but that bird sure can, or or maybe that squirrel saw who did that theft, that kind of thing. Meditation, this is how you recharge, and um, mind mages do need to reach. They're kind of like Dresden Files wizards in that department that they can do ridiculously powerful stuff, but then they really need an app. Uh, so mind mages and other psychic powers, uh, other psychics, they're going to run out of fuel before most magic using character classes will, but their powers are typically a little more, you know, emphatic. Uh, let's see. So that was telekinesis. Uh, so meditation he's got. He can object read. Um, this is uh, touch. He can... Um, uh, so with touch, he can read, you know, read and get impressions. Uh, sometimes see the past. If he spends a little more power, he can even try to get ideas about the present location of an item's owner. So that's a pretty good clue bat power. See aura. Uh, you have to be able to see somebody. You have to be relatively close, but you can get a lot of information. Like, how, what level are they? Do they have magic? Do they have psychic powers? Have a high or a low PPE, which is kind of like mana for for magic powers. Are they healthy or sick? Are they possessed? Um, are they non-human or a mutant or a supernatural being in disguise, but won't tell you which? So this is another good clue baddie thing. Sixth sense is a save my bacon power that kicks in automatically when unexpected mortal peril is about to happen. What it does, it burns a little bit of your ISP, but instead of uh, being defenseless against an unexpected attack, instead you get like plus six to initiative and bonuses to parry and dodge for the start of the fight. <clears throat> now the super psionic powers. Powers that basically only mind mages get. And these are just hey no fair levels of power, but they will burn through your reserves pretty darn quick. Biomanipulation, the evil eye. And this is just not fair. You reach into their body and start turning on and off nervous system stuff. So you can blind them, deafen them, mute them, pain, you know, cause them to feel agony, paralyze them, which is just ridiculously not fair to do to an enemy in combat, uh, stun them, uh, tissue manipulation, 
you know, uh, muting, a, muting a magic user is just no fair. Paralyzing a dragon, that's just not fair. Um, so this is the kind of, the psychic looks at someone and they either start rolling around screaming or they go blind, you know, minus nine to strike parry and dodge, or they just fall over, you know, for, for a good 10 minutes in the middle of the fight, which is typically count, contrary to your health. Uh, pyrokinesis, you, you can psychically do all kinds of things with fire. You can, for two ISP, reduce, you know, take half damage from non-magic fire. You can, you'll never have to worry about lighting a campfire again with spontaneous combustion. Fuel flame can, uh, double, uh, the, any fire, um, within range. Extinguish flame, obviously, is the opposite. Create flame. And this is just nasty. You can, you can make an eight-foot pillar, um... Uh, an eight, eight eight foot tall pillar about four feet wide or you can make a wall of fire six feet you know six feet wide you know one foot, foot thick and six feet wide and uh, it does just fair amounts of damage and has a high likelihood of setting anything combustible on fire including like people's clothes so you cast a pillar of fire on on somebody and they're most likely to uh, stop and pay attention to that for a while as they incinerate um, it's not very efficient because it costs a whopping 25 ISP, but you can uh, conjure a ball of fire and throw it at somebody, which is, you know, again, hey, no fair. Um, you can also detect fire. And probably your most broken uh, way to just burn all your ISP at the same time while winning, you know, winning single fights and then needing to nap for a day or two is super telekinesis. Um, you do 1d4 times 10 damage for every 100 pounds of whatever you pick up. And at level 1, you can only pick up one thing. But this has been used on things like entire trees, small vehicles, um, giant size enemies, small size enemies, you know, plucking, plucking somebody's uh, fallen, you know, plucking somebody's fallen comrade's body or a still wiggling one and using them as a, as a club to beat their friends about can discourage the random bandits, that kind of thing. Thing. It's plus three to strike. Yeah, I was wrong. Plus four to parry instead of because you're directing with your mind and not your hand eye reflexes. Uh, so not as not as high bonuses as your sword. But um, but man, you hit something. You 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 grab like two hundred pounds of, of 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 wiggling bad guy in their gear and you start using him to play whack a mole with his buddies and people are gonna sit down and notice. Um, which may or may not make you a priority target, but. Those are your powers. Um, that's kind of what your gear is. Uh, you know, I, I, I copied and pasted and made links to the full descriptions. So if you ever question what you can and can't do, you'll be able to use that. Again, this is a really skilled fighter, but not a tough one. Right? So this is a somebody who looks like a skinny, scrawny wimp. And if you don't know that he's got that he can turn you inside out with his brain and or you aren't, you know, sword fighting for points on a bear debt bet or something, um, you know, you could you could be surprised. But he's kind of a glass cannon, because mind mages are, but he's still a cannon, which can be very helpful. So that is Lex, the elf mind mage that I made for Gabriel, a quick introduction. So if he's got time, he can join us for his games. Thank you very much for looking through um, uh, for looking through a character creation for our Palladium Fantasy campaign. Peace.